All right, in today's video, we're going to cover eight of the most common and discussed maintenance items for these cars. If you're watching this video, all of these items are commonly discussed and repaired as of February, 2024. And if you're seeing this video long after it was originally posted, then it is possible that there are other more common issues that have developed on these cars. But at the time of recording this, these are some of the most notable items to be addressed on the E9X M3 platform. Now these eight items that I will be discussing are eight issues out of a possible nearly infinite amount of issues that can and will happen to these cars given enough time and use but the idea behind this particular video is to inform potential buyers new owners or seasoned owners who are looking for an in-depth discussion about the common issues of this platform all of which will range from weird idle issues all the way to total engine failures my hope is that this video can serve as a guide for the coming years to help explain these common issues why they develop how to fix them where to purchase parts how much these parts cost as well as the difficulty to repair said parts in case you're looking to save some money and do the job yourself each of the eight items will be broken into seven categories one what are these parts slash what do they do two why they fail three how do you fix slash what is the fix four where to buy the parts slash cost to buy parts five potential labor cost if not diying yourself six is a lift required and seven how difficult is the actual job to DIY? Now I have included sections that can be scrolled through on the video timeline below if you're looking for a particular part discussion and I will do my best to link as much as I can below in the description as far as parts. All I ask in return is if you watch this video and like to the breakdown of each issue or if this helped you decide on buying one of these cars or maybe even if you just learned of other items that need to be addressed on your car as someone who already owns one of these cars that you consider liking the video and sharing it with people who you think can get the same value from it. Also, if there are any other common issues with these cars that I don't end up addressing, please comment down below. I would be more than happy to make another video going over more common issues to continue providing this in-depth information for other E9X M3 enthusiasts like you and I. So with that, enough rambling. Let's get into the first and by far most common maintenance item that's discussed on these cars. All right, starting off with number one, we have the rod bearings. Now what even are rod bearings? Rod bearings are sandwiched between the connecting rods and the crankshaft. They separate the two parts via two half moon shaped metal plate. The crankshaft has oil passages that feed onto the surface of the rod bearings and allow there to be a very small film or thin layer of oil that the crankshaft spins on so as to not have direct metal on metal contact with the bearings. This, in theory, should allow the bearings and the crankshaft to have little to no wear as the two parts should, again in theory, never make direct contact. Now, why do they fail? The reason they are so prone to failure on these engines is because they were designed with too tight of clearances, meaning the space between the crankshaft and the rod bearings without any oil involved is too close. This results in premature wear of the rod bearings, which if not preventatively taken care of, AKA replaced, then eventually the rod bearings will wear out so much that they can end up spinning and allowing the crankshaft to come in direct contact with the connecting rods, which in the best case scenario would result in a complete engine teardown to either repair the damaged crankshaft if caught nearly immediately or the need to replace the crankshaft. However, in the worst case, if one or more rod bearings fail, you can end up with such a bad rod knock that you could blow a hole in the side of your engine, which would also result in a complete engine teardown, but with several other parts needing to be replaced. That or you're looking at buying a used motor, which is on par with the cost of trying to completely rebuild one anyways. Now, how do you fix, AKA prevent it from happening? In my opinion, the only real fix is to avoid needing to fix. And by that, I mean replacing your rod bearings preventatively. Unfortunately, rod bearings are one of those items that if they fail, it's already too late. Unlike say a water pump, for example. A water pump could develop a leak or the bearing could start making noise, all of which are obvious signs that it's on its way out. However, when it comes to rod bearings, there's no way to know the actual condition of them. And I know some people will swear by doing oil analysis tests when performing oil changes, but those aren't a very telling way to know the actual current condition of rod bearings, only that there is potential evidence of some bearing material in the oil. And even with that, in 2011, BMW changed the materials they used in their bearings, so those oil analysis tests are even less telling on the 2011 and up M3s. So I highly suggest replacing them preventatively. Now, what rod bearings should you buy and what do they cost? Now, there are a few different options, but by far the most common and reputable brands are BE and ACL. You could buy a BE rod bearing and ARP connecting rod bolt kit from Turner Motorsport for $953.99. And you can buy an ACL rod bearing and ARP connecting rod bolt kit 
from Precision Design Motorsports for $623.66. Now, both of these kits come with the extra clearance necessary to hopefully never need to address this issue again for the life of the car, assuming proper maintenance is done, such as oil changes at regular intervals. Now, what are the potential labor costs if going to a shop and not DIYing? Now, this is simply an approximation based on Googled labor times for this job, and I got somewhere around 10 to 15 hours depending on the shop. Now, assuming labor costs is somewhere between $100 and $200 an hour, again, just an approximation. Independent shops might be less and dealers might be more, but ex expect somewhere around these numbers, if not DIYing the job yourself. So assuming 10 to 15 hours at $100 an hour, you're looking at somewhere between $1,000 and $1,500. And at 10 to 15 hours at $200 an hour, you're looking at somewhere between $2,000 and $3,000 to get this job done. So I'd expect to pay somewhere between $1,000 and $3,000, give or take, depending on where you're getting the work done, if you're getting any discounts, or if you're doing any while you're in there parts, etc. Now, a lift is not needed, but is highly encouraged. This job is much easier when you could raise and lower the car and not need to work on your back. Now, the difficulty to do this job yourself, assuming one is replacing your air filter and 10 being pulling the motor, I'd say it's about an eight out of 10. It's definitely more tedious than difficult. The job of replacing the bearings isn't necessarily difficult. It's making room to remove the oil pan and even access the bearing, which is the difficult part. All right, moving right along to the next common maintenance item, and that would be throttle actuators. Now, what are throttle actuators? The throttle actuators in these cars are responsible for opening and closing the individual throttle bodies on these engines. There is one throttle actuator per bank, AKA one for each side of the engine. They each control four ITBs and they both sit underneath the intake plenum in between the cylinder heads. They operate via an input signal when you press on the throttle pedal inside of the car. A signal is sent to the actuators that will open and close them proportionally to the amount you press the throttle pedal. Now, why do they fail? These tend to fail over time due to constant repetitive use. Since these parts are both mechanical and electrical, they could fail in either way. If they fail electrically, then they likely have failed due to something in the circuit board inside of the actuator itself. And if they fail mechanically, then it's highly likely that one or both of the plastic gears that are responsible for opening the ITBs has failed, AKA broken apart. Due to these being made out of plastic from factory over time, as these go through several heat cycles, along with constant and repetitive load of use, the plastic becomes weak and brittle and eventually falls apart, leading to the inability of the actuator to open and close the ITBs for the respective bank slash side of the engine. Now, how do you fix it, AKA prevent it from happening? Thankfully, unlike rod bearings, these won't cause any catastrophic failures with your car. However, that being said, if one or both of these actuators do fail, then depending on where you're driving or what you're doing with the car, it can leave you immobilized and will put the car into limp mode, which can be a little scary if you don't know immediately what's going on. The most likely codes you'll see if one or both actuators fail is 2B15, throttle valve actuator control monitor bank one, or 2B16, throttle valve actuator control monitor bank two. Of course, there are many other codes related to it, but those are the most likely ones. All that being said, to fix the issue, it's as simple as buying new ones, installing them, clearing codes, and getting back on the road. Now, what do throttle actuators cost and where can you get them? You can buy VDO brand throttle actuators for $690.99 each from FCP Euro. You could buy genuine BMW throttle actuators from Turner Motorsport for $815.99 each. Or you could buy remanufactured throttle actuators from Euro Power Motorsport for $360 each, but that's after you've returned your cores once you buy them. If you don't return your cores, they're about $200 more each, but I highly suggest returning your cores because this is the cheapest and best option out there. Now, what is potential labor cost of going to a shop and not DIYing this job? Again, this is approximation based on Google labor times for this. I saw anywhere between about five and 10 hours depending on the shop. And of course, each shop will charge their own labor time for this job, but from a DIY standpoint, which means a shop should be able to do this job at least twice as fast as someone who doesn't work on cars for a living, five to 10 hours of build time seems like a fair approximation. Now, again, we're gonna assume 100 to $200 of labor time. Obviously, again, indie shops might be less and dealerships might be more, but at five to 10 hours at $100 an hour, you're looking at anywhere between 500 and $1,000 and five to 10 hours at $200 an hour, you're looking at anywhere between $1,000 and $2,000. So I'd expect to pay somewhere between $500 and $2,000, give or take, depending on where you get the work done, if you're getting any discounts, and again, if you're doing any while you're in there parts. 
Now, a lift is not needed for this job. You could do this job anywhere the car is parked. And the difficulty, I would say, is about a three out of 10. All you have to do is take the intake plenum off and undo as many connectors as you need to be able to lift the wiring harness up enough to gain access to the throttle actuators. And then obviously you take them out and replace them. Now moving right along, we have valve covers and valve cover gaskets. Now, what are they? Valve covers are what seal off the top of your engine. They are also referred to as engine covers as they literally cover the valve trains inside of engines and more specifically the cylinder head which houses the valve train components. The valve cover gasket is a rubber seal that is sandwiched between the valve cover and the cylinder head to keep oil inside of the engine. On these S65 E9X M3 engines there are two valve covers, one on each side of the engine as this engine is a V8 of course, which also means there are two valve cover gaskets. Now why do they fail? The valve covers on these engines, while not exclusive to this engine, are magnesium and from the factory, for whatever reason, BMW decided to coat the covers in a sort of paint or finish, and as a result, due to the cars now aging and having gone through countless heat cycles and whatnot, that coating has a tendency to want to flake off, and because BMW coated the entire valve cover, even the recesses that the gasket sits in, once it starts peeling slash flaking, it creates a small opening for hot pressurized oil to seep through. And when you combine that with the same heat cycles eventually causing the gasket to become hard and brittle as well, which leads to cracks forming, you end up with the perfect recipe for oil to leak from those covers slash gaskets. In minor cases, if caught early, you will notice a slight seep somewhere around the valve cover where it meets the cylinder head. And in really extreme cases, if the leak is bad enough, you can leak oil so aggressively when the car is running and is warmed up that it can leak down onto the exhaust headers and cause smoke to come out from under your hood, which not only looks worse than it is, but you can consume a lot of oil if it's an extreme leak like that. Now, how do you fix it, AKA prevent it from happening? This topic isn't newly discovered. It's an ongoing issue that has been discussed and addressed, so there's a lot of info out there as to what the best fix is. Some have suggested that you could remove the coating and have the top side of the valve covers powder coated while leaving the underside bare magnesium, while others have said that this isn't the best route. However, from the research I have done, the two best options for attempting to bulletproof this issue so as to not have to deal with it for several years is to either one, purchase brand new valve covers and gaskets, which will mitigate any flaking issue for hopefully the next five to 10 years at least, or number two, there's a company who has recently gained popularity for addressing this fix called NRW Designs, who have designed a perfect OEM match designed aluminum valve cover set that eliminates the chances of flaking occurring while also giving you the option to pick from several colors, hence why they are so popular regarding this issue. Now, where can you buy valve covers slash gasket options and what do they cost? You can buy OEM BMW valve covers for $1,773.99 for the set at Turner Motorsport. You can buy Bavarian Autosport valve covers for $339.96 each at Turner Motorsport. And of course you could buy a set of aluminum valve covers from NRW Design for $1,199.95. Now, what is potential labor cost if going to a shop and not DIYing? Again, I'll remind you this is an approximation based on Google labor times. I got anywhere from seven and a half to 12 hours, depending on the shop. Now, assuming again, $100, $200 an hour from seven and a half to 12 hours at $100 an hour, you're looking at anywhere between $750 and $1,200 and seven and a half hours to 12 hours at $200 an hour, you're looking at anywhere between $1,500 and $2,400. So I'd expect to pay somewhere between $750 and $2,400, give or take, depending on where you're getting the work done, if you're getting any discounts, and if you're doing any while you're in there part. A lift is not needed, and it can be done wherever you park your car. And as far as difficulty goes, I'd say it's about a three and a half out of 10. Again, you wanna take the intake plenum off, and you will be in some tight places near the back of the engine, near the firewall, but it's not a particularly difficult job once you get the valve covers off just make sure when you put them on that you torque the bolts correctly you don't want any of them to snap and cause a leak or hold up your car from driving now moving on to a more recently discovered and talked about maintenance item on these cars and that would be vanos gear covers now these vanos gear covers are a recently popularized major maintenance item on these cars these covers sit underneath the valve cover right in front of the timing covers and they quite literally cover the vanos gears their purpose is primarily to keep the spring that's attached to the front of the Vanos gears from coming loose and falling out of its place, which can cause catastrophic engine failure in extreme cases if not caught and handled. These covers are made of plastic, which BMW is not known for having the greatest quality control with, 
and so they are becoming more prevalent as a maintenance item as these cars are getting older. Now, why do they fail? In recent years, there has been more and more talk on these covers and how to properly address how to remedy the issue with them. The reason these little plastic covers are so important is because, as I mentioned a minute ago, their primary purpose is to keep the spring at the front of each of the four Vano skier covers from coming loose and falling out of place. Now, the actual issue with these plastic covers is as these cars age and go through various heat cycles and 8,000 plus RPM drives, what has started happening is these covers are developing cracks and starting to fall apart, leaving the springs exposed and able to work themselves free from how they are sprung onto the Vano skiers. Now this is bad for two reasons. One, if these covers break into enough pieces and fall down into the oil pan, there's a chance that they can be sucked up into the oil pickup tube, and if enough clog that pickup tube, then you could starve the engine of oil and eventually blow it up. Now reason number two as to why this is bad is if any of these springs do come loose and fall out of place, what can happen is as they spin with the gears, they can make contact with surrounding components, most notably the underside of the valve covers, and slowly shave metal away, which similar to the plastic pieces, will likely eventually make their way into the oil pan where they will be sucked up into the oil pickup tube and with enough of it, it can starve the engine of oil and blow the engine. Now, how do you fix it, AKA prevent it from happening? Sort of similar to the rod bearings, there isn't any clear signs of failure, at least from a day-to-day -day driving standpoint until it's too late. However, unlike the rod bearings, you can get a rough idea of the condition of at least two of these covers by looking through the oil fill hole on the passenger side valve cover and seeing if there are any cracking or missing pieces from the covers. Another good time to check, especially if you aren't planning to fix them at that specific time, is when you're replacing your valve cover gaskets. The valve covers have to come off regardless to perform any repair on these components, so that would be the best time to assess their condition if you don't plan to replace them at that specific time. Now what is the actual fix? The OEM fix is by far the most expensive and labor intensive way of doing it. Like many other over the top design parts from BMW, these plastic covers cannot be replaced on their own. They only come with the Vano skiers, which means having to re-time the engine, which is way more work than anyone wants to take on. Thankfully, there's now a few different companies who make DIY friendly metal snap-in covers that don't require any disassembly of the engine other than removing the valve covers to gain access. These covers, if installed properly, simply snap over the springs and should long outlive the life of the car. Where can you buy these Vanos gear covers and what do they cost? I believe the most popular option is a company called Sloan, who you can buy from Turner Motorsport for $487.99 for the set. You can buy Evolve covers from IND Distribution for $565 for the set, or you could buy a set of them from Europower Motorsports for $299. Now, again, potential labor costs if going to a shop and not DIYing. Because you have to remove the valve covers to do this job, I'm going to just assume it's the same as doing valve covers because once the valve covers are off, you can pretty much snap these in. It's hardly any more work. So similar to valve covers, uh, seven and a half to 12 hours at $100 an hour, you're looking at 750 to $1,200 and seven and a half to 12 hours of build labor at $200 an hour is $1,500 to $2,400. So expect to pay somewhere between $750 and $2,400 to do this job. I do want to note that this would be a while you're in their park when doing valve cover gaskets. And so I'd highly suggest doing both at the same time so you don't end up paying for labor twice to pull the valve covers off again. Now, similar to valve covers, you do not need a lift. You could do this wherever the car is parked. And similar to valve covers again, the difficulty is a three and a half out of 10. All right, moving on to the next maintenance item. Similar to the Vano skier covers, this has been a more recently popularized potential catastrophic failure point on these cars, and that would be your fuel injectors. Now, fuel injectors are pretty straightforward. They inject fuel into each cylinder in order to start the combustion process, and on these engines, there are eight of them, one per cylinder, and four on each side of the engine. Now, why they fail? This topic of failing injectors on these cars isn't as popular as some of the other more well-known and documented catastrophic failures. So with that, the exact cause for why these fail is still being debated. Some suggest that it's a result of poor fuel choice, maybe thinking that poor fuel has contaminants that can eventually work their way up into the injectors and cause them to fail. Some suggest that it's simply due to time, mileage, and use. There are likely a few other trains of thought, but the reason they fail isn't quite as important as getting ahead of them before they fail. The reason fuel injectors are on this list and why I bothered to replace all eight of mine preventatively on my last E9X M3 and will likely do it again on my current one is because what a failed injector can cause. From my research, it seems to be happening more often, but when and if an injector fails, it tends to fail open, meaning the injector will leak fuel into the cylinder constantly. 
Now in a minor case, you can get fault codes referring to your car running rich, but in extreme cases, if an injector does fail and excessively leaks fuel into a cylinder, what can happen in the worst case scenario is your engine can hydro lock and blow your engine. Now, how do you fix it, AKA prevent it from happening? Thankfully, this fix is pretty straightforward. I have yet to find any post stating that if you simply replace all eight that you'll ever have this issue. Of course, if you replace your entire set of injectors and drive 100,000 miles on them, then it's possible that you're back to where you were prior to replacing them and that you'll have to plan on doing the job again. Obviously, take the mileage mentioned with a grain of salt and replace as often as you feel necessary. Also, it's worth mentioning that that the problem causing this fail has yet to be discovered. So at the time, the best fix there is, is to simply replace them all. However, the same company who designed the valve cover leak fix, NRW Designs, has designed another product that they think will help in preventing this failure. It's an inline filter that attaches behind the driver's side valve cover near the firewall and their thought process is similar to the first one I mentioned above that the issue is a filtration problem, that contaminants are possibly getting into the injectors, so their solution is an inline filter between the fuel pump and the fuel rail in hopes of mitigating that potential problem. Now, where can you get fuel injectors and what do they cost? You can buy OEM BMW fuel injectors from Turner Motorsport for $240.99 each, or you could buy Bosch fuel injectors from FCP Euro for $404.64 for an entire set of eight fuel injectors. Now, what is potential labor cost? if going to a shop and not DIYing. I saw anywhere between two and four hours depending on the shop. And again, assuming $100 to $200 an hour. Two to four hours at $100 is $200 to $400. And two to four hours at $200 an hour is $400 to $800. So I'd expect to pay somewhere between $200 and $800 Again, give or take, depending on where you're getting it done. Now, a lift is not needed. It can be done wherever the car is parked. And as far as difficulty goes out of 10, I would say this is about a two. This is a pretty straightforward job. Once you get the intake plenum off, you have all the access you need to remove the fuel rails and fuel injectors, and obviously just replace them, reinstall and put the plenum on and you should be good to go. All right, moving right along, we have a very common and very discussed and documented maintenance item on these cars and that would be the fuel breather valve. Now, fuel breather valves in these cars are responsible for routing excess fuel vapor pressure from the fuel tank back into the vehicle's combustion chambers via a valve that sits underneath the intake plenum in between the cylinder heads. Now, why they fail? Over time, these valves, after actuating so much and accumulating carbon buildup, can get stuck and lose their ability to actuate properly, which will then inhibit it from releasing the excess pressures like they're supposed to. This can cause your car to idle rough right after filling the tank with fuel. Now, how do you fix it, AKA prevent it from happening? This is one of the easier repairs on these cars. Not only is the part cheap, but it's also relatively simple to gain access to. To repair, you simply need to replace it with a new one. The reason it is on this list is not because it can cause catastrophic failure but because it's a very well known and common problem on these cars. So it was worth mentioning if you're watching this trying to learn about the common issues with the E9X M3 platform. Now, where can you get them and what do they cost? You can buy an OEM BMW fuel breather valve from Turner Motorsport for $109.99, or you can buy a Bosch fuel breather valve from FCP Euro for $48.19. Now, potential labor cost of going to a shop is between one and two hours, assuming again, between $100 and $200 of build labor time. You're looking at one to two hours at $100 an hour would be $100 to $200, and one to two hours at $200 an hour, you'd look in between $200 and $400. So expect to pay somewhere between $100 and $400. Again, a lift is not needed. It can be done wherever the car is parked, and the difficulty out of 10, I would say, is about one and a half. It is very, very simple. Again, it's underneath the intake plenum. Once you have it off, it's pretty much right there on top. You just have to undo a hose clamp, Take the old one out, put a new one in, put in a new hose clamp, hook it all up, and you should be good to go. All right, moving along to the next maintenance item, which actually causes a similar issue to the fuel breather valve on these cars, and that would be the idle control valve. Now, the idle air control valve on these cars are electronically controlled and allows enough air into the engine to maintain a smooth and comfortable idle, similar to a throttle body, but not controlled by the throttle pedal, but rather by the car in order to maintain proper idle. Now, why do they fail? These can fail for a few different reasons. Because they are both electrical components and mechanical components similar to the throttle actuators, they can fail in both regards as well. If they fail electronically, they either won't be able to open and close the valve, or they will open and close the valve incorrectly and cause rough idling. 
If they fail mechanically, it's likely due to the valve sticking and not being able to regulate properly the amount of air entering the engine, which again will cause an abnormal idle. Now, how do you fix it, aka prevent it from happening? Similar to the last couple of maintenance items mentioned, the fix for this is simply to replace it. These are located further back behind where the throttle actuators sit in between the cylinder heads underneath the intake plenum. Now, where can you get them and what do they cost? OEM BMW idle control valves are $759.99 from Turner Motorsport and a brand called SMP sells them at Parts Hawk for $626.04. Now, potential labor costs, if going to a shop, I saw anywhere between five and 10 hours because they are a little further back than throttle actuators. And again, with a labor rate of $100 to $200 an hour, you're looking at five to 10 hours at $100 would be anywhere between $500 and $1,000. And five to 10 hours at $200 an hour would be a thousand to two thousand dollars so i'd expect to pay somewhere between five hundred and two thousand dollars if you were not doing this job yourself uh a lift is not needed it can be done with the car parked wherever and the difficulty i would say is about a three and a half out of ten it's a little more challenging than the throttle actuators as you need to gain a little more access to be able to pull the idle control valve out i personally am unsure if any of the throttle actuators have to come out to make room but i do know that the wire harness that sits across all of those components in between the head does need to come up a little more to gain access as well as there is hoses connected to the idle air control valve so it is a little more challenging all right last but not least i saved this particular maintenance item for the end because it does not apply to every e9x m3 only the dct cars and that would be the dct pan oil leak now what are they this particular issue is only for dct owners so if you drive a manual e9x m3 feel free to skip this part the DCT pan is exactly what it sounds like. It is the pan that sits at the bottom of the transmission and it holds the fluid inside. Now, why do they fail? Similar to most rubber components that are used to seal in hot oil, over time they tend to get hard and brittle and develop hairline cracks that allow oil to start seeping out. In this particular case, however, these DCT pans are made of plastic, which is even more susceptible to wear and tear due to heat cycling and hot oil running over it constantly. So combine that with an old brittle DCT pan seal, you have the perfect recipe for a leak that will most definitely get all over the under tray that covers it. Now, how do you fix it? The fix is nearly as straightforward as replacing the fuel breather valve. It's as simple as removing the DCT pan and seal, cleaning it all up and replacing the seal. However, it is worth noting that there are a few companies who have developed metal DCT pan replacements slash upgrades to not only allow for more fluid capacity, but also to attempt to mitigate how often it leaks. So it's worth looking into if you're interested in an upgrade. I'll add a couple to the cost options list. Now, where can you get DCT pans slash upgraded pans and what do they cost? Now you can get an OEM BMW slash Getrag DCT pan and seal for $183.99 at FCP Euro. You can buy a VTT billet large capacity DCT pan from Euro Tuning for $499. Or you could buy a Fall Line Motorsports aluminum DCT pan from Turner Motorsports for $899.99. Now, potential labor costs, if not doing this yourself, I saw anywhere between two and four hours. Again, assuming a $100 to $200 shop labor cost, you're looking at two to four hours at $100 an hour is 200 to $400. And at two to four hours at $200 an hour, you're looking at 400 to $800. So expect to pay somewhere between 200 and $800 if you're not doing this yourself. Now, a lift is not needed, but is highly, highly encouraged. This job is much easier when you can raise and lower the car and not need to work on your back, especially considering you wanna be underneath the car to clean and properly do this job. Now, as far as difficulty goes, I'd say out of 10, this is about a two. Once the car is up wherever it needs to be up, whether on a rack or on some jack stands and you're underneath there, you will have to remove some under paneling to gain access to the DCT pan. And obviously you'll need to drain it, remove it, replace the seal, reinstall it if you're not upgrading it, and obviously put fresh oil in it, all of which is not necessarily difficult. It's more tedious than anything, but it is not a hard job to do. All right, that wraps up the list of the eight most common and talked about maintenance items on these cars, as well as some of the more common potential catastrophic failure points on these cars. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, obviously everybody's ownership experience is different. These particular maintenance items are not the only problems that can happen with these cars. Obviously anything can and will break given enough time and use. And so I just wanted to go over in depth the most commonly 
talked about items that I've seen personally in recent years regarding the E9X M3 platform. If there are any other things that you've replaced or dealt with on these cars pretty commonly, I would love to hear them in the comments. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I am more than happy to make another video going over other common maintenance items on these cars. But in the meantime, I hope this helps shed some light on some of the issues with these cars. If you weren't aware, I hope this helps you decide on buying one if you are looking into buying one. And obviously, and most importantly, I hope you just learned maybe something new about these cars that you didn't know before. These are awesome cars. I've now owned two of these cars and I do think that with enough proper maintenance and upkeep, these cars will last and last and last and last and last. And they're just so amazing. And if you own one of these cars, you probably agree. So take this video, share it with a friend if you think they can get some value out of it. Please consider subscribing if you liked any of what this video had to offer. It was kind of a new idea for me and I'm happy to have made the video because I love providing this kind of information for the community. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.